we, uh, we heard from a lot of, of uh, professionals and specialists. I'm, I guess, what you'd kind of call a uh, very much a, a generalist, um, general practitioner. I've been independent, I guess I should switch the, the slides here, independent now for 14 years. Uh, started out as a trader, uh, became a lot more involved on the deal side. Um, retail, 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 that's, I'll kind of get to that, but uh, it's truly been a phenomenal year and, and without that retail following, uh, and as I like to say, I, I operate a site called Stock Syndicate, which is kind of my little retail army, um, in addition to a, a capital corp, as you can see, a cannabis um, a resource and a number of other digital initiatives. But um, again, as far as myself, started out as uh, options trader, venture capitalist, do mostly merchant banking as my primary business now. Um, going back to 2012 on the topic of RTOs and IPOs, which is a great topic, uh, I connected with the former owner of the Vancouver Whitecaps who had secured a little venture vehicle called Supreme Resources. Uh, right before the peak of the marijuana madness, we were able to um, structure that shell properly, move it onto the CSC, uh, change the name to Supreme Pharmaceuticals, of course, which has now got about a about a 300 million market cap. It's raised in excess of 30 million on the CSC, probably at least another 20, 30 in warrants. Uh, so a great, great case study on, uh, on the successes of the CSE. <coughs> uh, I myself directly involved with uh, Aurora Cannabis during their process, Health Space Data, Golden Leaf Holdings, Invictus MD, M Pharmaceutical, Helios, which is now a big board company, uh, LDS Lifestyle, which again on the shell side we helped structure, we financed uh, uh, and allowed, built that foundation to allow it to, to get bigger and, and go on over the next five to ten years. Um, and the next one coming up, which the CC is aware of, is a company called Canada Royalty. I've been involved with a couple of years, uh, just closed eight and a half million. Five of that was actually at two dollars. So um, we are getting some pretty lofty valuations in cannabis, but um, th this particular one's doing over two million a month in sales. So it's a, a bit of a different monster. Um, so getting right to it, uh, should I go public? Um, I love what what was actually said uh, before that. Um, Mr. Faulkner, that you know, going public is not the event. That's that's the beginning. Um, you hear so often people about, should I go public? I'm going to go public. They refer to it as if it, it's the end game, when in fact that's that's the first thing. That's where you really start. Um, be prepared when you go public that you're operating two entities. You've heard it a lot because it's the truth. Um, you're operating your company, your people, and all the moving parts. You're also operating retail shareholders, brokers, bankers, analysts. Um, promotion, your IR, your corporate communications, etc. Uh, so do be advised you need good people. You are absolutely operating two different entities once you become a public issuer. Um, on that note, you know, on the low side, before you hire your, your IR, etc., um, you could call it eight, you could call it 15, budget roughly 12,000 a month I've put in here. Um, you're going to need a really good team around you. You need proactive investor relations, someone that will actually get out there, uh, represent the company, go to all the, the networking events, um, solid corporate communications. You need, obviously, uh, marketing and uh, social media is more important now than ever, of course. Um, and fundraisers. If you don't have uh, some good fundraisers in your corner, um, you know, on the broker topic, I, I can almost say that if you take real estate as an analogy and you're a real estate developer or real estate flipper or whatever you want to be, if you don't have a good team of realtors and, and people in the business, you really aren't going to get very far. So I work daily, literally, with, with Brian and a number of brokers that without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, I would not enter into a deal without a lead broker. People will often say, well, I can trade for you know, $6 online, why pay a broker $100? It's, uh, it's, in my opinion, a very ignorant sort of comment. But again, um, brokers are very much required. And when you go into a financing and you've got a Brian Henry or a big name lead, that will cause uh, you know, obviously, uh, it'll start that snowball. It'll create a, a lot of demand for that uh, because people know that that deal's been vetted by a big name or a big firm such as Brian Henry, such as a, a, somebody at Canaccord, et cetera. They'd like to know that that, that vetting's been done. So a, a good broker in your tent is going to be, uh, uh, could be make or break. Um, where there's history, there is no mystery. Uh, one of my favorite sayings. So uh, to briefly touch on it again, find a shell versus a new RTO. Uh, I have, in 14 years, honestly seen bad share structure ruin more deals than anything, including running out of money, internal strife, you name it. Um, that cap table, which is again discussed in the retail, they kind of call it um, internal enrichment. When you see a half penny raise a week later, a penny raise a week later, a five cent raise, all in the period of a month, that's uh, not, the retail has become very, very savvy. They don't want to see that. So make sure you can justify 
um, who's in the deal at what levels, um, what value, and just ensure that when you go and you bring that cap table to a desk, to a bank, to an institution, um, that you can defend it and not have to um, squabble over your cap table and cheap, cheap stock. Um, build a best of board and management team, it sounds very obvious, but again, um, that's why I say where there's history, there's no mystery. If you can put together a board and a team that has got some history, that's had an exit in the past, um, that's currently serving on a, on a board that's doing very well, that's obviously going to lend to the credibility. Um, people you can work with, people you can trust. Um, your tribe, you're going to need top-notch accounting, you're going to need top-notch legal. Um, it's expensive. If you can't work with these people in a, in a uh, relatively, you know, just call it a, uh, an everyday basis and, and really understand what you're doing with them, they're, they're really going to make all the difference between uh, success and, um, and struggling, trying to do it yourself. So hire the best auditor you can, hire the best uh, legal that you can, and really rely on those folks. Um, Brian said it, raise more money than you need, no matter what. Um, start that raise before you need to start that raise. Uh, in other words, don't go out and announce you're gonna raise $2 million uh, because you think you are. Um, I've put here that you know you, there's all sorts of metrics, but um, ideally I wouldn't go out and, and announce $500,000 raise until I have a minimum of a quarter million committed. So keep that in mind that um, you don't wanna put a raise out and let birds chirp for 12 months as you try to collect your money. Um, and just a note on bad money, there is such a thing as, uh, as bad money, so be very selective as to who you put it in, in whose hands. Um, quick note on warrants, uh, be very cognizant when doing a financing when it comes to warrants. Um, lots of good and bad, what does it say about the company? Um, on one hand, consider that if you have one million warrants out of 25 cents strike, that will literally rain down 1.25 million dollars into the till as you get into the money, so it's, it's a baked in financing of course. Um, at the same time, there are a lot of deals where, where warrants are not necessarily required and um, obviously they are, in essence, a sweetener. So, so be sure that you're, you're waiting the, the strike for, um, correctly, you're, you're doing whether it be a full or a half warrant. Put some real thought into the warrants on your financing if they are there. Um, asking a premium on your financing will show conviction and show confidence. Asking a discount to the price where your stock's trading obviously shows a little bit of desperation and urgency. Not in all cases, it's very general, but again, um, really be cognizant when you announce a PP, have commitments, have allies like, like good brokers on your team, um, have good loudmouth retail ambassadors on your team. Those, those retail folks, the high net worth do-it-yourselfers, are probably your best free sales force out there. Um, they're the ones that get in there, you know, everyone from their barber to their neighbor to their aunt. And Supreme Pharmaceutical just closed 15 million oversubscribed. About three of that came institutionally. The rest actually came from existing shareholders. So it's a a real testament to uh, the power of the retail out there. They're definitely not to be discounted. Um, traditional promotion is no longer as effective as it once was. Um, there's a growing trend and high level of due diligence among the retail investors. So you've now got these people nerding out on balance sheets and taking out the CEOs for lunch and really getting to know the company. Um, people often would, would hide behind their screens in years past and I find now more than ever, particularly when they're taking down a private placement, they really want to get to know this company um, is this guy going to be spending my money at Joe Forte's on wine or is he going to be going and executing on a business plan? Um, so when it comes to promotion, again, um, just again, ask around, make sure you're getting somebody in, in groups like Stockhouse that are reputable, that have been around, um, because you really need, again, all the help that you can get. Uh, I've got a note, actually I should just say, so yeah, concentrate on good brokers, analysts, real writers, and any retail influencers to become your ambassadors. Um, Last quick one here, the market is always, is always smarter than you. Um, and I hope you can forgive, I'm a little all over because we put this together here kind of yesterday, but hopefully you guys will get the, the gist of, of what I'm, uh, where I'm going here. So quick comment on the topic of rollback, which often comes up um, in various stages of go public. Um, there is such thing as too much of a rollback. There's of course too, such thing as not enough of a rollback. So uh, i.e. obviously after a 10 to one consolidation, if that stock was 20 cents, it shoots to $2, and you'll essentially kill off all liquidity in some cases, we've all seen it before. Um, or do you want a stock with hundreds of millions of shares out trading at a penny or two pennies with massive liquidity? So it's about finding that, that balance. Do we want to crank it back to 5 million? Do we want to let it sit at 50? And again, consult professionals in order to not, uh, in order to not roll back too much and really kill off um, the liquidity that your stock may have. Um, market making, I just put a note here, very, very critical. Um, find a, a good IROC market maker. 
I think it's probably something that's probably the most under um, underutilized thing out there. They'll they'll start your stock off at 6:30 in the morning. They'll create a chart for you. Um, they're going to create that that snowball, of course. Um, stocks do not trade by themselves anymore. You guys have seen this. There's so many options out there. Investors and brokers alike are inundated. Do not expect fireworks on your IPO day, um, unless, of course, you have assembled the right broker, the right analyst, the right writers, companies like Stockhouse to be active in your market. Um, you, you cannot put up that ticker and expect that you will just start to trade organically. It's, it just simply does not work like that. Um, and again, just a note on investors, very, very well educated now. Uh, they know your balance sheets probably be better than you do. They track expenses. They'll question CEOs more than ever. Um, so expect very long, strong, strong lines of communication. Stay, uh, I've got just a note here again, things like check swaps. We've talked about cheap stock, but uh, um, what check swaps do, and we've seen this over the last few years, is they create free stock. So in other words, you want to bring somebody in, you give them X amount of, of paper, um, they blow that out as quickly as they can because their cost basis is zero. So if you're giving stock to somebody, please make sure they pay for it, know what they've paid for it, know what their cost is, otherwise you run the risk of, of under the, after that four month lock, which it traditionally is, expect it to come back at you 100% because they did not pay for that stock. So just, again, seek good help um, when getting promoters, and again, promoting is a very very necessary thing in trading. It's, it's not a bad word, but it uh, can be done properly. So. That is uh, about it for me. I'm a bit of a big mouth on Twitter, have been for, for a long time. Got a lot of uh, retail followers on there. Uh, again, Stock Syndicate is where I, I blab a little bit about commentary um, and all sorts of things. So by all means, if you'd like to contact me, I don't have any offerings here today. I'm not, I am independent, as I said, so I'm not uh, up here um, promoting anything, but hopefully give you guys a good sort of, uh, again, a generalization after hearing from so many good professionals here. So thank you.